I'm not sure. Hey, this is Rob Ansbach, and welcome back to another edition of eHeroes. For those keeping count, this is episode 270, and I brought on an awesome guest who has unfettered energy, who is just unstoppable. And we actually heard from her engaged husband, or um, we call we call him his her husband, back 99 episodes ago. So you got to go back to see Chris Whitehead. But today we're going to talk about the other half, which is Rob and Brand. So I want to thank morning. you for being here. And, well, uh, thanks for having me. You know, they say that this is your first podcast. It is. And it it's is hard my to believe because you got a radio official. show. Yeah, it kind of happened by chance. <laughs> I um, I think I lived most of my life that way in in vibration and in energy. Yeah, you know we're off air, and I'm I'm drinking this. For those that see me on video, I'm drinking this vitamin water called Energy Tropical Citrus, and it's nasty. And uh, every time I take a sip. I make this awful face because I just, I should have just gotten something else. But see, that's life. You know, sometimes we are filled with energy, but we don't know the direction that we're supposed to go with it. And um, so sometimes, you know, entrepreneurs think that they got to be busy all the time. And that's their energy. And, and, and you just came back from Aruba, which yes. incidentally is or was my grandmother's favorite place to escape to and really have you I, been i've never been always wanted to and uh but when you see pictures of an 80 year old woman with her friend on the back of a little scooter going through aruba you know you have to go yes you know and 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 to me that picture resonates not only with me but with you because I can see you doing the same thing. I hope I have a <laughs> friend of mine. <laughs> I have a friend of mine. She is, I don't know the second number. She is well into her nineties and she drives a convertible. She lives in North Carolina and she is sassy. Every time she's in a convertible, she wears her Boston Red Sox baseball cap and she's always got her jewelry and her heels on and she's just sporting around town and she's got this feisty, fiery energy. And I resonate with that. I don't ever want to lose that kind of energy. No, every, I, every picture I see of you on Facebook that, that Chris posts, it's just full of energy. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's, it's like I said at the very beginning, unfettered. I mean, it, it just, you can't be restrained. And uh, I, I just think that's awesome. I think my mom's been trying to do that since I was, you know, <laughs> knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> I was, um, I never sat down and I still don't sit down. Really. I don't watch TV by myself. I, you ask anybody in our family and I don't know how to turn the remotes on. And he got rid of the option where you speak into the remote. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I do when I don't know how to navigate around them and each TV is just a little bit differently, but I just, there's so much more to life. And I think the pictures like, I, well, I like photography and I like capturing moments. Mm -hmm. My, I think my motto is make memories. Well, I have a lot of mottos, hold my beers one, but to make memories is I think the most important thing in my life. Do you take a lot of pictures? Uh, no. I mean, they're on my phone. They never come off. Um, and, and it's ironic because my very first business when I was 19 years old, I partnered with a, a guy from New York and we created a video photography business called Make uh, Moving Memories. Wow. And uh, we had these jackets up and, and it was all, and, and we were doing a lot of weddings and, and, uh, but one day I woke up and he was gone, took half the equipment, never saw him again. And I had to shut the business down because I couldn't do it all. <laughs> but I, I learned a valuable lesson. And, and 
and, and it took about six more years before I would start another business. But, um, you know, you, you, you pick people based on, at the time, I, I, I chose the wrong people to, to uh, invest with, to partner with. Mm. And I, 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 you know, I, I've been married now, well, going February will be 35 years. Wow. And, Congratulations. Uh, we have six kids, six grandkids. And, and so, you know, you, you learn things over life. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, ad- I also admire you and Chris because you're building something different, something new. Um, maybe you haven't been married that long uh, or not at all, but you got this family, you got this business, you, you are a partner, you, 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 you know, come together on things and you might not always agree, but you're building something that, that mm-hmm. benefits a lot of entrepreneurs and, and that's iconic. But you also had this other partner that, you know, you had this radio program with. And so I, I, I think my, my, uh, my take on life is that you pick the people who are going to resonate with you to help you further, you know, that message mm. to others. I agree. I think that the more that I go down this personal, I guess, journey of development, I don't even know why you do it. (laughs) I I think there's two types of people in this life. There's people who um, eat to live and live to eat. Mm-hmm. I only put things in my, well, I shouldn't say that because that's kind of, <laughs> it could be a little bit off color, but <laughs> I was going to say that I enjoy, if it tastes bad, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm not going to waste calories on this bad stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> I kind of waste calories on vegetables too. That, that goes in that category. I don't like that. <laughs> Chips, soda, candy, good food. I think my microphone is coming untethered, but we're going to just go with it. (laughs) Yeah, I really kind of um, used to poo-poo personal development and mindset training because years ago when I was witnessing people reading all this book and going into these personal development masterminds and it just was like a lot of BS. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anybody applying what they were learning. And I like, so I was like, whatever, it's just, that's a bunch of baloney. And, you know, being with Chris, you can't help, but not to expand your mind and explore because we're, we're just immersed in it at Mm -hmm. home. And our networking and our groups. And it just made me realize, you know, my whole life I've had all this energy and I've had all this, these ideas and maybe curiosity is probably the better way to put it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, mean, I, 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 I met Tony Robbins 23 years ago. And, you know, I, I, I guess the day that I met him, it was at a QVC studio. He was doing a program. I think it was Get the Edge or one of those. And I was in awe. And then three days later, I'm like, what a jackass. I don't want to deal with him anymore. <laughs> and and I, I just, everything that I learned about Tony up until that point, you know, I, I, I admired the man and then he got divorced and, and now he's with this other, and, and he basically stripped his, his ex-wife out of all his books and courses and materials. And I thought, Mm. you know, no, embrace the past, use it to fuel the future, you know, and, and, and I think everything that Mm. he's produced since then, I, I poo-pooed. I I just, but there are a lot of people out there that like it. And I think there's a lot of people out there that need it. I'm just one of those probably like you that, that I look at the world and I'm like, okay, does, does that work for me? Uh, is, am I gonna? Am I gonna? No, that, that's awful. And then I started writing my own books, and I'm thinking, God, do people think like that? That of me? I mean, and I just thought, screw yeah. it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be my sarcastic self. I'm gonna put out books that, that I want to put out. And when I started doing that, more people started gravitating towards who I was and what I wanted, and 
out of life and 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 i just thought it was better um you know you're mm. living, you're living your life the way you're meant to live it not based on someone else's words in a book or program or course and 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 i think that's what that's what i like about iconic is, is that it's not someone else's uh regurgitated stuff you know yeah i, Chris, I think Chris is and and you you're, you're very very dynamic in how you present stuff oh well thanks i think that um more important like i resonating with everything that you're saying and i'm like yes 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 <laughs> Part of the reason I like Facebook and I like photographs and we just did a radio show on this. I like going on my Facebook page or my Instagram and those are all memories and that's, those are chapters or stories or snippets of my life. And once I finally jumped into personal development, I decided I decided and it empowered me to embrace mm -hmm. the concept that we are actually living our life. And how many times do we allow other people, bosses, employees, obligations, society, political correctness, dictate the way we live our life? Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of people use social media as their highlight reel. I guess in some ways it is a highlight reel, but I think both Chris and I share some of our, our hiccups as well. It's mm -hmm. kind of all, it's all out there. And I think just being real and finding people that match your energy and your vibration, boy, does, does it make life feel like it explodes? Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing a radio station, I'm doing a radio show and Later on this afternoon, she's coming in and we're starting uh, to record two different podcasts. One is we've gotten a contract for a local grocery store to do five minute commercials of what's for dinner so they can play it on the way home. Mm -hmm. it, like this thing is expanding and getting a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And Wicked Prissy is I started a boudoir photography I'm a huge visual person, but I think about how it's incorporated into our whole life and how, how energy is used in that. You walk into our house and you feel a specific energy. The clothes that I wear give me a specific energy. I think we all do that. Mm -hmm. We all do our vibration. And what I think is beautiful is finding finding that rhythm between uh, in uh, your energy, your vibration that creates harmony in your life. Mm -hmm. If that, does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and the funny thing is, is that you mentioned grocery store and you know, most men don't like going grocery shopping. I go not for grocery shopping, but to look at people to oh. to to okay i'm judging people yes i'm going there and i'm going to judge you now really i'm 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 going there to see a lot of people when they go out in public you can visually see their personality before they even open their mouth before they even do it anything and and mm. and as i'm standing there in the grocery store i might have a cart with me just to, so it looks like i'm doing something and i'll look at somebody and the way they walk, the way their mannerisms are, you can tell if they're approachable right off the bat. You can tell if they don't want to have anything to do with anybody. And, you know, a mm. lot of times, you know, I'll find the person that that wants to be approached and I'll say hi and I'll have a story and I'll talk to them. And that just makes their day because, you know, even though, you know, they 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 do have this approachable look. They don't always know that someone's going to approach them. And, um, but the ones that are just, you know, grouchy and, and mm -hmm. way, but you can tell, you just keep your distance. And, and, but there's a lot of people that are like that. And, and, you know, I, I do that at the grocery store. I do that at, when I go to Disney world, like, 
you know, I, I just engage with people and I find their story and, 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 and I get them to, you know, learn about me. And, and so at least somebody is taking mm. home a little bit of, oh, I, I met this guy at the grocery store and he talked to me and you know, maybe I changed their life. Maybe, mm. maybe, who knows? Maybe they're out there looking at me up in Google going, I'm an asshole. But it doesn't matter. I, yes. I, you know, yes. I, I, I want them to you know, remember. You know, that, that just that five minute conversation, you know, and, and, yeah. and so, and so you're talking about food and that's great, but it's, but do you food. want them to remember you or do you want them to remember the feeling? Like if you take it away, yeah, probably the feeling, because sometimes they, they're not going to remember who I am or they're not going to remember how to pronounce my last name, uh, but they'll remember that, Hey, someone cared enough to talk to him. Yeah. Sometimes I walk into the store years ago and Chris would say, you always are so unapproachable at the grocery store. And like when he would go with me to the checkout line and they're like, Hey, how are you? And I'm like, great. How are you? And he's like, it's totally, you don't mean it. And I'm like, well, I don't really care. I just want to get in. I want to get out. I don't want you to talk to me. And I would go in the grocery store. And a lot of times I still do. I don't make eye contact because the energy in there. And I just, I, or I'm preoccupied, but I have noticed the more that I am aware of my energy and the power that I have in how I show up mm -hmm. in the, in the, the power and the energy that I use in any situation, you know, Chris and I have been having conversations a lot at night and the last one we just had last night, we we're talking about what if we could all get into the practice of just before you're coming home from work, your hand is on the door and you're consciously aware of how am I showing up? Am I bringing the stress of the day at work? Am I bringing, what am I bringing home? Mm -hmm. You know, we spend so much time in our home making it pretty and cleaning it and taking care of it. And it's our safe space. Our home is our soft spot. Mm -hmm. But how many times are we actually using that soft spot to a place to be soft, to nourish ourselves, to reset from the day? We don't. A lot of times we just bring it home and we puke it all over our family members. And then we're wondering why everybody's in four different corners or nobody's talking at the table or there's no interaction. It's that energy and it's that vibration that we're supposed to fall into. Mm -hmm. That's our healing ground. That's our safe space. And if we don't, if we don't leave our other stuff at the door, how can we experience something new? Mm -hmm. And you go into it like an, a business meeting, you go into it, into a podcast, you know, like this morning I was like, <sighs> I had my timing all set up. I got a phone call that got me de de delayed. And I'm like, past four cops on the way here. I'm going 60 and a 30. I ran a red light. I'm like coming in hot. <laughs> I'm like, I think I need a shot of liquor. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe a more powerful energy drink to get me here. But not this one. <laughs> right. But, and so there was just a little bit of chaos, you know, before we started. And, you know, this is our first, well, this is my first podcast in the new podcast studio for Iconic. So, Chris is like, I think you should come over here and do it. So it's just a, a ramble. And I actually had to close the door to the podcast studio and crack it open and walk in so I could physically give myself a way to change my energy. So I wasn't coming in like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, I've learned a long time ago that, uh, you know, as soon as I leave my office, I have to be a different person at home. And it, it's it's hard sometimes because we're dealing with phone calls, fires, people. People are the worst. I mean, yes. Yes. If 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 I could be an entrepreneur without people, that'd be awesome. 
I could just, <laughs> you know, but we have to deal with people all day long yes. and we don't under, always understand their problems. I had somebody call me up and they're like, insisting mm -hmm. that we screwed them over and did something bad. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. And they're right. like, well, isn't this such and such a company? I'm like, no. And they're like, and then they call back because they got the number wrong again. And I start, and I'm like, dude, you got the wrong. And then I get an email. It's you. I know it's you. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's how you handle those situations that take mm -hmm. you into your family because you didn't, there was no place to vent. The thing yes. is, for me, all that venting went away when I started writing books. Mm. 10 years ago, when I came out with the first book, which was Share All About Social Media, that became my therapy. And now I've yeah. produced 43 books in 10 years. And every book that I work on, whether it be mine or my clients, I get to vent. Mm. I get to, I get to see what's going on. I get to learn. I get to, and and so now I come home and I'm I'm positive. I'm, I well as positive as I can be, and and uh, I think the kids appreciate that. Well, my older kids didn't really appreciate it because they were already out of the house, and they're like, to the younger kids, well, you, it's, it's like you have a different dad. We weren't raised the same. Well, no, like where weren't. was he growing up? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 you got to learn. Yeah. And, and it's tough for a lot of entrepreneurs because, um, especially in bigger cities, you know, they, they, they drive to work. It, it's, it's a nightmare. You know, they spend eight to 10 to 12 hours at work, come home. And that's not a life. That's, 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 you know, you created yourself a job mm. and it's a prison. And, and for me, I work four to five hours a day now. That's it. I'm done. That's awesome. You know, and, 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 you know, the days I have to do a podcast, I might work an extra hour because I'm enjoying this conversation. Uh, but, you know, when you get to a certain age, you just, you just say, Hey, I'm not doing that crap anymore. I got to figure out how to do something different. That's, that's more in line with what I want. Yeah. And, and, and there's just a lot of entrepreneurs that are just, I think they, they need the help. They don't know how to ask for the help. And they don't know how to channel mm -hmm. the help to, 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 you know, give them freedom. I think, and yeah, and a lot of times freedom is the goal, right? Mm -hmm. For entrepreneurs yeah. and the difference, you know, for entrepreneurs, you feel like you're building the cathedral by yourself. And so, the lines get cloudy when it's home and business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you're a lot of times entrepreneurs work from home or you don't have, you don't have a nine to five, right? Uh, you know, entrepreneurs give themselves 24 hours, whether they consciously know it or not, mm -hmm. there's nothing that's not available. You get a phone call at 11 o'clock at night and it, you, somebody needs to talk. Well, guess what you're going to do? You're going to get off the phone or you're going to, hang up and then go right back to sleep or go get, you know, no, you carry it with you. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, one of our great friends, she has always used the words and I, I love words. And so, especially when somebody gives you a word and you're like, yes, that's it. I've been looking for that word. She's used a phrase holding space. And so Chris and I started working on that and asking for permission. Hey, is now a good time for me to dump or I need you to make some space for me? Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't always work that way because something just happened and he, you know, shit hits the fan and he calls and he's like, hey, I got to talk. And I'm like, I'm still on the radio. <laughs> Hold on. But so we are getting better about that. But the thing that I adapted or modified for that phrase about holding space, when you make space for someone, imagine it to be a big bucket mm -hmm. and you're just holding it out so that they can dump. Just make sure that the hole is in the bottom so that you're not attaching to it. Yeah. Especially if somebody wants to talk to you about divorce or 
abortion or child rearing or business, any of those things, we all have something in that in our life that we can attach to that too. Maybe you're struggling in your relationship with your spouse right now. And so when somebody hits you with that, so for me, being able to detach other people's feelings, I notice that my bucket is a lot bigger when my hole is in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And I've also noticed that I've been going to the grocery store or when I do go shopping, that I'm much more engaged with people. Mm -hmm. I literally was at the grocery store the other day and I had my earbuds in. I was talking to my mom. She's in Ohio. We're catching up and we're doing Thanksgiving, you know, so I was asking her about holiday prep and literally four people in the grocery store stopped me while I was talking on the phone. And mom is like, what are you doing? Are you wearing a sign? Cause it's not normal that people ask, talk to me. And I just thought about it on the way home. And I'm like, no, I am open. I'm open in mm -hmm. my energy and my vibration is open. I'm open to receive mm -hmm. part of my morning ritual manifestation mindset. I go through my gratitudes. I go through my, I am statements. Part of my, I am statement is I am open to receive from the universe, mm -hmm. all the good juju, mm -hmm. <laughs> not the bad. <laughs> I don't want any of the bad. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and the last three months, I, I think that's all I got was bad. And I'm like, I didn't invite this, you know? <laughs> <It's> like, <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was, uh, you know, my wife's father died uh, in the end of August. Oh, I'm so sorry. And, and you know, he was, he didn't have enough life insurance to cover anything. <sighs> so my wife and I paid for the funeral. And then at the same time, uh, my oldest daughter moved out and her cat destroyed all the carpet on the second floor. <sighs> so we had to pay to have new carpet and pad installed. And then our car got rear-ended. And it was Jeez. like, everything was compounding. <laughs> and I was like, and it, you know, and then I had a couple of people ask co to borrow money because they had problems. And mm. but the thing is, is that I was fortunate, and 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 it kind of changed the way I reflected on this. Is that yeah, a lot of things happened, mm. but I was fortunate enough to be able to help people. And isn't that why we created all this 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 company? I mean. Yeah, I mean, we want to have money for retirement. We want to have money for all this other stuff. But really, when it comes down to it, is community, is family. Mm -hmm. So we created this company. We make all this money. And yeah, we're going to retire someday. But the people that really need us right now needed that money more than I did. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to be able to help them. And And then I started realizing that there's a lot of people out there that don't have money, that don't have enough savings, that yeah. don't even have enough for when an emergency happens to cover it. And and so it's like when we got rear-ended and our car had to go in the shop, we were given a rental car. And the insurance company says, and mm. granted, it wasn't our fault. The other people were, were the other insurance company was, was paying for everything, but they needed a credit card to secure the rental car. Okay, I have one of those. I didn't realize I was going to have to pay it, then get reimbursed, and then have to right. pay my. Card. But right. when you think about it, there's a lot of people out there that don't even have a credit card. So if they get their car wrecked into, how are they going to secure a rental car? You know, right? And 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 so we're we're, we're like, wow, you know, we're very fortunate. We to are have very what we have. And and. You know, so when you start putting things into perspective, saying, hey, you're you're very fortunate, you're very, and I don't like the word lucky, because lucky infers that I gambled something, you know, I, I just, mm. I, I spent, you know, I'm 54 years old, I spent 30 years as an entrepreneur, building what I have, right, you know, and, and so people will say, wow, well, Rob, you're, you're lucky you have all this money. Mm. No, I, I'm not lucky. I, I earned it. <laughs> right. But you I'm, know, grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I can help you. Yeah, yeah I, I do believe, I do believe that what you put out there comes back to you. Mm -hmm. I think being smart about, I, and I do think that we're here to help people, whether it be 
financially, not, not that we're carrying the burdens, but right. to be smart, to be smart, to, to help in, in all ways. And I think being able to use our voice, and if we do have good energy or we've learned a trick to tap into that, to give us peace inside or inside of our home, heck yeah, I do think we have a responsibility. I think we have a responsibility to, to spread it. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago, Chris asked me, we were dating and I was staying, we didn't live together for many years of our relationship. Um, and, and that's a story. I keep telling Chris that he needs to write the book and let me, Hey, let me just give you the ideas and you write the book. I already have the title of it because he's much better about putting into words than I am. Mm -hmm. Like I'm good at painting the picture through the camera lens. <laughs> <laughs> or the energy or just figuring it all out. You're the one who's supposed to, I'm the chaos. He's the order. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he needs to assimilate all of that. But boy, being in all of these masterminds and personal development groups over the last couple of years, we actually do. Once we can harness that power, mm -hmm that we can, we, or, or the knowledge, maybe that's a better way to say it. When we can harness the knowledge that we have control over our atmosphere, our energy in any room that we come into, that's powerful. And that changes your mindset. You know, Chris was in a Chris is in a funk, you know, everybody, we're all in a funk and I'm going to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, the last couple of months, you know, in the construction side, because Chris also runs a brick and mortar business, mm -hmm. a construction company. And so trying to build both of those at the same time is really stressful. Well, you know, I had, uh, I had a, a carpet cleaning business for 19 years while I was <laughs> doing this consulting. And I've been running now the consulting business for 23 years. So there was some overlap in both of them. And so I know, I mean, there, there's, it's very hard to run two different companies at the same time. Yes. And especially when they're both growing mm -hmm. at the same time. And you have our son working at NECR and we have you know, and his sister works for us, his mom works for us in the accounting, and I'm doing, I do my part and help out in Iconic, but now this radio and the podcasting thing is starting to take off. How do you not bring that home? And so my word for the year has been surrender because I am a triple A type personality. Everybody in my family and all of my children's friends that come over know where the ketchup goes in our refrigerator. Like our closets are color coordinated. I am very particular about details. So surrender was my word and it picked me, but I think I've grown out of that word. And now my new word has been gratitude. Gratitude is the great gateway for grace. And the last couple of months, Chris has been just carrying a lot of stress and a lot of our interactions have been complaints and negativity and things that aren't going wrong. And we are clashing and I'm like, I don't even want to be around him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I don't really want to be around you either. <laughs> he's like, I don't know why you got your jingle bells on and go. <laughs> Leave me alone because you're not understanding me. And I just said, no, Chris, I've been trying to just focus on great on gratitude and how much gratitude has changed, changed my life mm -hmm. and just changed my mindset and the, giving me peace because I don't believe that there's balance. I believe that there's harmony mm -hmm. and in a relationship when you reach harmony, that's where all the magic happens. Mm -hmm. But I also think that harm in your company, in your business, in your transactions out in the outside world, 
you carry that, you carry that with you. And so that's something that I've just been playing around with the last couple of weeks. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because after 35 years together, you know, we go through these battles too. Kim and I have, have, you know, you know, have probably fights that resemble yours very much so. And, and, you know, it, it's, I, I've, I've kind of gotten to the point where it's like, no, family mm-hmm. first, business second. And it's hard because we're tethered to these things. Mm-hmm. We're, we're tethered to, to social media, you know, and, 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 you know, it, I, I just, I, I, I finally said, you know, I've had enough of this garbage. Do I want a better uh, marriage or do I want a better business? And yeah, the, the business funds my, my family life, but I can't have my family life fund the business. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's that balance. And, and, you know, if I thought I could give this all away, I would, you know, and, and mm. just stay with the family. But then I look at, I'm like, okay, we got a big house. we got six bedrooms. We got, you know, and, and, and we always have somebody staying here because we, we've made it an open door policy that if any of our kids or nieces or nephews are in trouble, they have a place to come and stay. And, and you know what, after a while you think, Oh my God, that's, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of, you know, you're bringing more dynamic into an overly saturated dynamic and it's like, yes, oh my gosh. but you, you got to learn to adapt. And, and, and for me, adapting was hard, you know, but yeah, you, for me, I have my office away from the rest of the house so that, you know, I, I just have a little bit of moment of quiet. I can get stuff done. And like I said, Four or five hours, I'm done. I hyper focus. I get my work done, and then I go deal with the family. And it, and 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 I, I, by doing so, I make more money. I have mm-hmm. more freedom to spend with the family. We can go do stuff. We can, and we're taking more vacations. And it just it it feels better. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. So it, it's you know we can all have we can all have a, a calm business where we come home and, and, and then have a calmer life where we can have the storm constantly. And that's no fun to mm. try to run either a family or a business. And, you know, when you take too much of that stress home, the biz, the, the family doesn't survive either. Right. You get to, we get to choose. Mm-hmm. We get to choose. We get to choose what kind of attitude we want to be in right now. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that we have been working on consciously in allowing space to when emotions are getting heated either me or chris will say to one another this is a choice right now and boy does that hit your ego (laughs) because i feel like (laughs) i try to be fair and i try to be super cool like i'm let's I'm upset. You're upset. I feel like I have a right to be upset. I just want to explain myself. And I know that he wants to explain himself, but when our pride or ego and boy, you know, I'm a Southern girl. So no way. when that line, my, my thing keeps cutting out when that line gets crossed, I'm like, all right, I can go redneck real quick. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> But I, instead of saying that in my head, I've been saying, I have a choice. Mm-hmm. What kind of relationship do I want? Is my relationship, because we also have the saying, I love you, but I don't like you very much right now. Because that's just real. I mean, mm-hmm. there's some times that we look at each other and like, Ugh, who are you? You're <laughs> getting on my nerves. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but that's real. And and he says that, you know, he can say that. You just need to (laughs) stop my little jingle bells and go away. But if we both have been practicing, this is a choice right now. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's not promised. No. Shit. Two hours is not the next two hours. I don't know what's going to happen. 
am I going to choose this? And once I started, once I started leaning into that, a lot of other things change for you. You don't realize that you have business problems. You have people problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those are just at work. Right. In realizing that, okay, that is stressful and that's a lot to do. And I could probably work on this for another 10 hours, but it's not going to do me any good. I have to go reset. And where are you getting your energy from? If you get your energy from home, don't bring all that stuff home have a few minutes to vent or dump and then let's go find, let's, let's go create what we do want. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, with you and Chris working in the same business, it, it's very hard. My wife and I co-own on Spock media, although I do most of the work, she takes care of the grandkids. And so sometimes I'll go up and, and start telling her about a client and she'll, she'll just say, make a decision. Yes or no fire him or what? Just, do something. I don't want to hear about it. I'm like, okay. You know, and, and she knows I'm going to make the right decision. And, and, uh, and well, I, I guess she hopes that I'll make the right decision. I, I sometimes don't. Um, but do you sometimes just think that you go upstairs? You already kind of know the answer, but you just need that feedback. You just need that connection. Yeah. That just that little bit of reassurance to being like, okay, yeah. 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 I, 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 or, Sometimes she'll just go sideways and tell me something different. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't think about that. And then I get all mad because I didn't <laughs> think about that. That's what Chris is like, go away. Yeah. That's not what I asked. <laughs> but then a lot of times, you know, I mean, it happens a lot of times. We are flying down to Boston, going, you know, getting ready for him to go speak somewhere. And he's kind of playing through. I'm like, well, what are you going to talk about? And he's like, well, I was thinking about this. And he's listening to it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. And I'm like, it's getting hot in here. I'm like, that's great. That's going to be fire. Then he gets on stage and it's something completely different. And he's <laughs> like, well, I'm like, what happened? He's like, well, I'll save that for another one. I'm like, do you even remember what it was? No. He doesn't. He's like, it'll, no. it'll, it will surface when it's meant to. I, uh, I never write down my speeches. And when I go out and, and, and give talks, I'll gauge the audience for a couple of minutes before I get up there. And, um, you know, so all my talks are different mm. and, um, you know, which is good because I don't take slides. I don't take any of this. I, I, to me, all that's a hassle and nobody wants to just stand there and read your slide. Well, and, it's, and, I think it carries a layer of authenticity, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes I'll just go off on a tangent and people are like, what are you doing wrong? That's true. But whatever, you know, it's it just, I, I try to be authentic in my talks. I try to gauge it for the audience. And, 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 and sometimes I, I do. I, and, and people are like, wow, that was, that was refreshing. Or that was very sarcastic. That's who I am. And, and right. you know, and, and, and some people love it and some people don't. And I'm like, hey, I'm not for everyone. So, right. and, 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 and I like it that way. Because I, I don't want everybody coming to me with their problems. I can only solve one problem a day. So. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So how do you guys reset your energy? How do you, how do you reset your energy? Well, we go on vacation when we try to. I mean, <clears throat> I, I love going to Disney World. That, that is my go-to place, although she's getting tired of it. Uh, What's your go, favorite ride? I like Pirates of the Caribbean. Got it. But. We were just there in, in, in September and they got the new rides, the Tron and Galaxies, a Guardian of the Galaxy. And I think Guardians is now probably my favorite, but really for, forever Pirates was. And it was just Pirates was one of those things that just took me back as a kid. Because when yes. I first went to Disney World in 1984, Pirates was there. And, you know, my childhood comes back every time I get on that ride. For Guardians, it's a new ride. It's an intense ride. And, um, you know, it, it just, it's got the visual, it's got the, the, the force and, 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 and you get off of it and you either want to throw up or you want to go do it again. <laughs> and that's life. That is that's life. true. Yeah, so. I actually was going to say, that's kind of like relationship people's, your experience with certain people. Yeah. Maybe that's why I didn't like to make eye contact in the grocery <laughs> store. 
So tell us about your radio show because we got a few minutes left and um, it's it's you and Lisa. And how did that get started? Well, she's my realtor. <laughs> it really kind of just started um, energy. Mm. Chris and Lisa have worked together for years. She is a realtor and she's in property management. And she called Chris's company in years ago to help her rehab some apartment buildings that had been vacated and she wanted to get them up and running again. And it was just kind of a joke. When I said my kids, when my kids graduate, we're going to sell this house and get out of town because <laughs> in New England, well, in New Hampshire, your property taxes are, are based upon what town you live on. If you live in a, in a good school system, the property taxes are really high. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, we're going to move. So it happened to be the market was hot. Um, I listed my house on a Tuesday. It sold that afternoon. <laughs> we had paperwork and it was going forward on Thursday. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Most of my life happened this way. So through the process of her and I looking for the house that we're in now, we became friends. Earlier in the spring, she was working on a cookbook and she asked me to come over and just kind of help, help keep the process moving for her photography, the staging, the cooking, the prepping. And so she booked some time on the local radio station to launch and promote her cookbook. She's wanted to build community forever. I was a guest on there. The owner of the show called us in after our first show. And he said, I need you two ladies in my office. And I'm like, are we in trouble? <laughs> He's like, no, I think there's something here. There's some good energy here. And it's something that this radio needs. And I want you guys to do a show. So we started doing a show and it's getting some traction. And they're getting us a new camera. They're making changes in the studio. And just to see that growth is, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And it feels a little, I don't know, intimidating. It feels a little bit, because I'm in this world of, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in my world. And there's a lot of badass people in there that are crushing it and killing it. And so I get asked, where is this going to go? I'm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm actually in the energy of it. Yeah. And, and I'm see, you know, that, that is what happens when you live your life with unfettered energy. I mean, you get asked to do things, uh, things happen in, uh, in, a, in a moment's notice. And, and, but here's the thing is that you mentioned competitors, you mentioned other entrepreneurs. There is nobody on this planet that is like you. There is nobody that does what you do. Same with me. There is sure. nobody that does what I do in the manner I do it. And, and I want every entrepreneur to understand that. Yes, you might have people that do similar things, but mm. nobody does what you do in the manner you do it. So that's what makes you unique. And that's what makes everyone unstoppable if they channeled that inner that's energy. True. Yeah. So behind me is Wicked Prissy. Uh, last year, I've always dabbled around with photography for my kids and, um, flirting with Chris. I've always done sexy pictures for Chris and sending it and then got creative. And, 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 and I've made fun of some of his sexy yes. pictures. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> and I also create grocery lists with those sexy pictures on it because he's like, hell yeah, I'll go to the grocery store. We need that. <laughs> um, so to me, that's just fun. And I like thinking outside of the box that way. I like being creative. Mm -hmm. But part of my story is before I, I started Boudoir when I was 49. Absolutely. And that's a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also it's also, you know, I want to change stereotypes. I would love to inspire and impact people to be who they truly are. If I can do it at 49 with all of my baggage, 
you know, I said on the radio the other day, I had twins. I was 185 pounds and I delivered two months early. I can't imagine if I had gone two more months, how big I would have been. I probably would have been as big as this room. <laughs> but I never wore a bikini before I had kids. I was so ashamed and embarrassed of my body that I felt I didn't feel feminine. And after going through and gaining that much weight and getting through a twin pregnancy with no scars on my, you know, stretch marks, my pregnancy, my pregnancy, I just realized, man, I'm not living my best life. I, I, I'm not, I'm not taking a chance. I'm not loving me. I'm hiding. I'm hiding in the shadows and I, I am perfectly imperfect. And I want other people to feel that way. So Wicked Prissy, the radio show. I don't know what it looks like. I just know that I feel it inside of me and that's the energy that I operate in. And that is where our, I think that's, that's how I think the radio sto show started the mm -hmm. podcast and then on this trajectory, I don't know where it's going to go. I'm excited. I feel like I do my muscle test. It keeps telling me to lean in. So I lean in and here we go. And as everybody should do lean in. Yeah. So yeah. where do people find you? Do you have a website? Do you have, uh, where, where can they go to, to learn more about you? Right now, the best way would be Lisa and Robin on the mic at gmail.com. Okay. Just email you. Yes. All right. You can find me on Facebook under Robin Brandis and Lisa and Robin on the mic. TikTok, it is Wicked Prissy and Robin. I think it's Robin. Oh, it might be Beach Mama. Beach Mama. I think it's Beach Mama. On, on Instagram, it's I think it's Beach Mama. Yeah. Yeah. So it, Wicked Prissy has its own email yet, but I haven't. It's. I had two domains. Anyway, that's the best way. Lisa and Robin on the mic. There you go. Yeah, and 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 I did jump on the. Uh, I guess it was uh, the radio station, and I listened to a few of them, and 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 uh, you know the the it's very common, you know, and, and it's, it's nice to hear all that perspective because <clears throat> I think just a lot of people are, are, mm. they're, they're just so much in a hurry and they need to slow down and they, they need to just look, listen to a good message. Yeah. I think if you just pause, we're getting better, you know, and we just started this April and so learning public speaking and learning to be better about your thoughts and what message do I really want to convey? Mm -hmm. It's a learning curve. I think we're getting better. We're not there yet. We're getting there. But hopefully it inspires somebody to love on themselves, be courageous, step outside of your box, just be willing to entertain a new perspective. Yeah, for me, it's always been get off my lawn. <laughs> it's true. Don't ring my doorbell. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even call me. But, you know, the scammers make me money. So they go on my books. Anyway, That's true. That is um, true. So thank you, everyone, for being part of uh, the Robin's Nest, really. That's, <laughs> you know, you learn a lot thank from you. you. Yes. Yeah. We're Robin. And, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. So. Adios. And again, thanks, Robin. And, and yes, this thank is why, you. This is why Robin and Chris are your heroes. And, and, and hopefully we have them all back again. So anyway, again, see you guys in the next episode. Adios.